the Wayne Ayers Podcast. The Wayne Ayers Podcast. Woohoo! Time to wake your ass up for a blessed day. about the bad news like um yeah yeah, where did you where were you like how did you find out I hope I'm not over speaking here but I can't it's like a thing about me I can't lie even if I really really want to so the news about star girl sorry I was trying to send an email to find you um okay the news about star girl has kind of been on and off I really hope I'm not over speaking but since May I actually found it in May that star girl might not be picked up for a fourth season and I was on an airplane and um, I was actually flying to an event for Stargirl when I got the news. And it was so like, but that being said, it wasn't for sure. And the next few months after that became this emotional roller coaster of, uh, yeah, I think it's going to get picked up or, oh no, we're pitching it to a different streaming service or, oh, we have to get this service to pick. So it just became this emotional roller coaster where I was almost like not expecting it because I'm an annoying optimist and so is our showrunner Jeff Johns but like I had almost been like prepped for it at that point because it had been such a roller coaster but um when I finally got the call from Jeff our showrunner I was on my way home from work from filming here in Vancouver and I was so sad I thought I was prepared because like I was like okay like my skin is a little toughened at this point, but it's still, you know what it, my heart is still healing from it. It's forever going to be like one of the greatest experiences of my life. And the really cool thing about being like in the DC universe and being a superhero is star girl could come back whenever and wherever, when people least expect it. So um, even though technically the star girl set might not be coming back, I'm very optimistic that star girl might get to to make a surprise appearance on like another DC show or something. I know like people like, I know I saw like many, I think it was like, I want to say over at least a hundred thousand like petition sign for like to go to HBO Max. Was there like any talks about that at all? I think so. I do know um, here one moment. I think my heater just turned on and I don't want it to like be super loud. <laughs> I don't know. The whole podcast is <laughs> like I said, I, I try not to overspeak, but I do know Jeff. Je- I'll just call, I, I always say Jeff Johns, my showrunner. I'm just going to call him Jeff. Um, I do know Jeff like did not leave a rock unturned. He campaigned for Stargirl. And I think that's another reason I've had so much peace about it is because I know like there was no, I don't, I don't think there was another option. Like every option was kind of seeked out and really campaigned for. So I was kind of given peace about like, no, this is truly what is meant to be. And nothing was left unspoken from what I understand. But um, once again, I hope I'm not over speaking. No, like, I know everybody like, like they just want to see you on a star girl. And I know like with the new like DC films and TV announcement, like James Gunn and um, yeah. Peter becoming CEO like, would you, would you be open to, like, coming back at Stargirl, like, in the DCU? I know they're going to need it in the future. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think Stargirl has truly become a part of me and, and vice versa. Um, I have so much love for the character and her as a superhero. So, yeah, if the opportunity ever came up, I would absolutely jump on it, specifically if Jeff was attached because he's the true heart and light behind Stargirl, so... I know, like, with filming and everything, like, Star Girls, like, takes up most of your time. Is there, like, like, is there, like, any, like, projects that you're, like, excited to even, as, like, an audition for? Or is there any projects coming your way since the announcement? Yeah, well, like I said, I'm actually in Vancouver now filming um, these four movies for Lifetime and A&E. They're based on the VC Andrews book series called, I guess it's considered the Don Cutler series. So I've been here for a few months filming those, and... They are so different from Stargirl, but it's these projects have really pushed my acting and that's been really fun. I mean, Stargirl pushed me in different ways, just like physically um, acting as well. But this is like such an, these scripts are crazy. They're just so emotional up and down. And um, I'm really proud of the work I've gotten to put up and I'm excited for people to see them. Speaking of projects, I know you got, I, don't know, I think I made a list of them. Hold on. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's there's Saturday at the Starlight, the man in the white van. Uh, I think there's like two more or three more that I saw. Yeah. Uh, is there any way you could tell us about those projects or you can't say anything? Yeah, so Man in the White Van, I filmed almost, no, it was about a year ago that we wrapped finished, we wrapped that film. Um, it's cool because it's based on a true story. It's a fictional script, but it's based on a true story. Um, kind of like, you know how there's the creepy stereotype of white vans? Well, that actually comes from like a real life serial killer who took their victims in a white van. And so it's kind of, bringing light to like that 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 story and the the real story behind the the white van um I got to work along Ali Larder and Sean Astin who played my parents and Madison who I was she's our leading lady in that film and I got to play her older sister and it was really cool and really fun hopefully should be coming out sometime next year I know they're in the editing room post-production I think we actually have to do some reshoots on it so who knows, but hopefully coming out soon. And then Saturday at the Starlight, literally filmed it five years ago. Um, I don't know what's happening with it. I don't think it'll ever see the light of day. But regardless, it was a fun movie to be a part of. <laughs> yeah, how does that ever work? Like, did, is it, how do, do they have to, like, make the movie and then pitch it to networks? Or, like, how does that ever work? Because like, Yeah, man, so just... that was that one was considered an independent film, meaning, like, independent production companies came and put all their money and pennies together to make this movie. And then after the fact, they go around and pitch it to get picked up by a streaming service or um, uh, a bigger studio for theater release. But uh, I don't know what's happening with it. Have, honestly, I think it's just shelved. I think it's one of those that just will sit on the shelf forever, which sucks, but it is what it is. Part of the industry. I know like <laughs> some shows stay like that for like, 10 to 15 years and yeah. then they put it out and then they put it out like would you like even want to go to the premiere if they had like a premiere I for it? no I would because that I I have I don't even really remember what it was about like I couldn't even tell you one scene but I it was a really wonderful cast it was um Abigail Breslin and uh Michael Madsen and Dylan Summerall who's like uh, you know my person in real life too which was fun we we actually got to shoot that at the beginning of our relationship it was such a beautiful bonding experience. Um, so yeah, I, Brit, there's so many people that are such wonderful actors and talent attached to it. So I think the world should see it at some point. Maybe, oh, yeah. it's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I also heard you were going to be in, uh, what is the project called with, um, it's Fran Dresser. I, I keep putting a butcher. Yeah. Yeah. Word, but... So that's what I'm filming now. Oh, that's what you're filming now. Yeah. How's that like? Out? Say again. How is that like? Oh, it's it's great. It's the one, like I said, it's really pushing my acting. Um, gotten to work with really wonderful actors as well. Um, I'm in Vancouver, which there's so much filming in Vancouver that like I'm getting to see like a lot of my actor friends just because they're filming their shows here. Like uh, Sophie Nalise, who's currently filming Yellow Jacket season two and uh, Alex Garfin from Superman and Lois. Like we've become such close friends so it, I feel like Vancouver is like this little community of actors and it's been really fun to like be in a different country, but also like see people that make me think of home. I know, uh, I, just speaking of Superman, Lois, is there ever going to be a crossover? I know there's possibility people keep talking about it. Yeah, I definitely think there's, all, I think there's always possibility, which is like the cool part about the DCU, like nothing is impossible. So if I have anything to do with it, sure, but I have nothing to do with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I also have another one. There was uh, talks of the Star Girl pairing DC Titans. Is that even true? Or I mean, like I said, all things are possible. I mean, it's not no, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's what do you miss about playing Star Girl? Um, I mean, this is going to be the most cliche answer, but it's the truth, and it's it's the casting crew. Um, you know, we were working together for a time span of four years even though we only did three seasons we worked together for four years and um those people became family to me uh I, Yvette who played just Wildcat who's you know Courtney's best friend on the show she's easily become my best friend in real life and so just like you know getting to work with people that you love so much I think is such a blessing I mean it's just a blessing to have a job as an actor every time I show up to set I'm like oh live to see another day but then get 
to go to a job where you love the people you work with, like it's, my, I still yeah. don't believe I got to do that. <laughs> I know like a, a lot of people in our generation is kind of like they're doing into the executive producing, writing, you know, directing. Is there like, has there ever been talks between like you guys on set? Like, hey, we should just go do this like one indie project. Just, you know, or has there ever been something like that on set? Yeah, well, I, I am a writer. That's like one of my other passions. Like I just finished um, writing my first full feature that I'm currently in the process of like pitching to get funded and get made. Who knows how long that'll take though, but I'm here, I'm doing it. Um, but actually Yvette and I, we were talking like maybe a couple weeks ago saying, cause she's wanting to get into writing as well. I'm like, girl, we should just write a script together, starring both of us and then go pitch it together. So I think all things are possible. I know Angelica's really, um, kind of going towards that, but she's also so busy as an actress too. I don't know how she'll ever have time, but, um, Yeah. I know you just uh, mentioned like you just wrote your first first feature film. Is it like who's like your dream cast to have in there? But. Oh my goodness! I mean, there's different characters in it. I did actually. So I love like rom coms, like early two thousand coming of age romantic comedies. I love them. It's what I grew up on. They're very nostalgic to me, and I feel like they're made so seldomly nowadays. And so I started writing my script kind of with that in mind because I would also like love to act in a proper rom-com so I kind of wrote it in in mind to star in it as well but I'm also super open-minded because I think even if I just got a, a script funded but they were like but we don't want you to be in it like I think that would still be so cool to be like oh I'm officially a writer like acting completely aside um I don't know I don't want to talk about it too much because it's still like you know, I'm still like third draft. We got like 12 more drafts to go before it's even ready. But you guys speak these things to existence. You know? Absolutely. Manifestation. I completely believe in that. But you you also said rom-com. So you have to have like a co-star somewhere in there. Like, Is it like a co-star you're thinking about in that if you do get to star in it? Yeah. So um, there's a really great father figure role in it. And it's, you know, dream, dream cast someone. I've worked with Rob Riggle before and I just think he's absolutely hilarious. Also a really wonderful person. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from Ted Lasso in Ted Lasso. So maybe like a little Jason Sudeikis action. Yeah. Oh, no, I feel like- <laughs> Why people, not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, I mean, those are two good people to have in a wrong come. So I'm not- gonna... Yeah. Um. What is, oh, I have some fan questions for you because, you know, I told everybody with the interview and they're like, we need you to ask all these questions. So they sent me a bunch of questions. I love it. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring on the uh, questions. Uh, Rob, Robert Colt wanted to know, what's your favorite scene in episode of each season of Star Girl? My favorite scene in all and, of... The, like, favorite scene and episode for each season. Oh, goodness. Okay, let me think. Season one... I'm just going to say like what pops in my head first. Cause if I really went back and like watched the whole season, my answer would probably be different, but this is, we'll just be like first thought season one. It would be episode 13 where star girl and stripe are sitting on the water tower. And it's just this beautiful song. It's a beautiful shot. It was filmed on a green screen. So getting to like, you know, film on a water tower on a green screen and then see it being like, oh, wait, we're actually 100 feet in the air. However, that was really cool. And I think it was a really beautiful close to that season. Um, season two. Oh, you know what? It's Shadowlands episode, which I believe is episode 10 or 11, um, where Courtney gets stuck in the Shadowlands. That's my favorite episode, although my favorite scene is probably the Eclipso fight scene in episode six of season two that was a monster to film and I really feel like it played well like it was worth all the hard work that was put into it um in this most recent season I mean I'm just gonna I'm gonna say the episodes to come episode 13 you know our our season's a murder mystery and I feel like episode 13 has so much you know, like the whodunits finally get answered. And there's an epic fight scene at the end that I, I haven't seen yet, but I've heard that it's pretty crazy. Okay, I'm actually excited to see this. Um, I, this next person is a Twitter user. It's, I think the username is Starbucks, Starbucks Lover. If I'm butchering, I'm sorry. 
They said, what's your, <laughs> they said, what's your favorite Camney, uh, Camney scene? And if you had a fourth season, what would, you, what would she like to see for them? Uh, my favorite Camney scene, it's probably, it's, you know, I'm going to get so specific. I'm going to give a Camney moment. And it's episode, it was this past episode that came out this, this past week, I, I guess episode nine, season three, um, where Cameron is fighting our man and he like protects Courtney with his ice powers. And even when we were filming it, cause it was like, he had to slide into it and I had to like whip around, and like cover my face, but then he came and protected me. And it was felt so epic to film and seeing it. I just thought it was like very like heroic and beautiful. And I loved that moment. Um, and if Camney was to continue, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> I guess maybe if they could finally like, I oh, I was about to give a spoiler. I can't even, I can't even answer because the, the, the rest of the third season hasn't even come out yet. So whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not me literally about to spoil the last, the last episode of the season. Oops. Uh, I know. I'm glad because CW would have been calling me like, hey, that podcast episode can I go up? <laughs> Uh, Malik Malik Arrowverse, I think that's his Twitter user. My bad. If I'm butchering everybody's name, y'all can hate me later. Uh, do you do you feel the fi- uh, finale episode will resolve, wrap up, and uh, answer questions and storylines? If, if if the final episode wraps up everything, uh, un- yeah, like unanswered questions and the storylines for Sargo. Yeah, I mean. Jeff was so smart because obviously there's been a lot of changes in the CW and at Warner Brothers this past year. So the future of any show was was in question. And because of that, he went the extra mile and he shot two different endings because he did not want to leave the fans with all these question marks. So um, there is there's a there's a there's a lot of beautiful closure on in the last episode. Speaking of that's crazy because speaking of that, the next user Twitter user was uh STCR West. My bad. I don't know. You guys got some weird Twitter names. I need y'all to say your <laughs> name. But they said, knowing that they really shot two versions of the finale in case of cancellation, can she disclose can she disclose what was going to happen in the episode we won't get to see? Yeah, so Jeff said he I I hope I'm not whatever. He said he might end up releasing it on the DVD. He doesn't know. I hope he does though. But it will make people sad because the fourth season idea was insane. Like it would have been it just would have been epic. Like on a whole different level. And I actually believe that's why it took so long for us to officially get the cancellation news because everyone wanted this fourth season to be made because it was, Jeff came in with such a wonderful idea. And that's why I think everyone really fought for it. But, you know, it just, it wasn't meant to be. And it was, we, that it is what it is. But um, I hope he does because I think, I don't know. I, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I have no power with that, but I think there is a world where people get to see or find out about it. No, actually, I, I think that's a cool concept. I feel like most shows, most shows should do that. Like, hey, this was going to happen if we continue on. Hey, this is yeah. like the ending. I think that, that's actually, that's a very thoughtful thing to do. Mm-hmm. I know you guys probably get tired of it. Like, man, we're not trying to shoot two different episodes. I actually, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it was good though. I saw, <laughs> I saw both endings. He showed me both um, and they both made me cry. <laughs> so... <laughs> No, yeah. Um, this no, I really I feel sad. I feel like that show was like it was really family oriented. Like more than the other era other era versus show, it was really like family or how like how how did that even come apart? Just the writing or just how the crew and everybody just got along together? I mean, I definitely I give so much credit to Jeff because throughout the cast and crew, I think he he chose really wonderful people and that was kind of always like a priority to him that if you were going to join this family, you had, there were no bad apples. That was what I would say is like, we don't, we don't do bad apples on the star girl set. And because of that, we were just so blessed to have all fresh, crisp, wonderful apples. (laughs) Uh, No. Yeah. I definitely totally much agree. Uh, This guy named son of Hera. I need you guys to work on your Twitter names, but it's okay. If you had one more season, what would you like to do with your character? Um, well, that's hard because I I know what our fourth season would have been. So I don't, I don't know. 
I'm going to say, I don't know. I, I'm very grateful that our third season ends so beautifully. I'll just say that. Has there, uh, this is like my personal question. Has there ever been like a scene that you wish uh, that got cut that you wish didn't get cut? This is going to sound so horrible and I don't mean it to, but I, I'm, I tend to be in quite a bit of scenes. So like, I'll forget that scenes got cut. Like I'll forget that we filmed them. And then Jeff will remind me be like, oh yeah, remember that scene that I didn't make the cut. And I'm like, I would have never known. I forgot about it. Cause I like, I mentally had to be in the headspace. Like I would shoot the four scenes and then I'd have to forget about them. Cause I had to start preparing for the scenes the next day. <laughs> no, okay. Is, is there like something you wish you would uh, not like, wish, like you wish you could have added to the show? Like even if it's not, even if it like, wasn't going to be in the four season. Uh, I guess more, more JSA stuff. So like more, Yolanda, Rick, and Beth, and Courtney. I think their dynamic was so fun, and I would have loved if it could have gotten a little bit more light shed on it. Okay. Uh, Richie96 says, is there going to be a Stargirl and the Flash crossover? I didn't even know there was a Flash crossover. Cool. So I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. (laughs) Is that bad? Did I just, like, say, is it, like, a known thing that there's a Flash crossover coming up? Yeah, I think I think it was the title Armor. I want to say it's title Armor again. They're gonna kill me if I get this wrong. But yeah, I think it's called. Uh, I believe there's a crossover coming up. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Brooke, I got two questions for Brooke. Brooke uh, said, "Would you be open to doing more DC projects as corny if their opportunity presented itself?" Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And then her next one was, "What are three words would you describe the season three finale?" Um, shocking, epic, heart. Okay, I like that. Is there like any way? Because you know, I'm I'm gonna be the villain here. Is there any way you're like, hey, I want to get into the Marvel universe? <laughs> Is that the DC one? Absolutely. I there's only been a few actors that have done it who have done both both universes. So I want to be added to that list. Is there like a is there like a certain character like yo I definitely would just like I would love to be this character. No, this honestly, show. I've been so focused on like the DC comics as of the past four years of my life. I haven't really read any Marvel comics. Um so I don't know. Okay, okay. I love it. Given like your success and massive talent, I'm sure like you're always busy. I seem you live on sets like even now. <laughs> um, as if, if you weren't like in the industry, like in the film industry, what would you like want to be, or what would you okay. see yourself doing? Uh, I actually do do something else besides acting. So like I said, I do writing, but that's in the entertainment industry. But I do real estate investing. I'm oh, okay. super, yeah, I'm super passionate about real estate. I always have been. And I think it goes so well with my careers, act, like with my scheduled acting, because if I have a month or two hiatus, I can kind of buckle down, close on a, a property or two and then get back up. And then I don't really have to worry about it again. So that's kind of like my other passion. No, actually, I'm glad you said that. Like, I kind of want to get into this now a little bit, but like, so like, what are, what are like some good properties to buy right now? I know there's like a lot of stuff in Tennessee that's doing good. Like, yeah. what, what was like your advice for anybody? Like, hey, I want to be a real estate investor too. Like, what should, what should be your oh, first good. move? Okay. That's such a loaded question because there's so many wonderful deals out there. My, what well, I would tell people who are wanting to get into it, like, yes, the real estate industry at this very moment can be very intimidating. Interest rates are high, prices are high. So what does that mean as an investor? There are still deals out there. Trust the numbers, look up, look up formulas. Like there are proper formulas for real estate investing to find out if you're making a good return. Um, Plug in numbers. What I do is I just look it on Zillow. And if it seems like it might be a good deal, I plug the numbers in. And if the numbers make sense, then I might do a little bit more research on it. Okay, like, what is something that you consider, like, you guys should never do? Like, what's, like, you should never do this in real estate moment? Um, rush into something. Double check everything. Double check, ask questions. Even if it seems like a dumb question, the only dumb question is an unasked one. Um, I've definitely made some mistakes in my first couple of deals, but every mistake I make, you know, I, I won't make that same mistake again. Um, 
I also like, for me, I really struggled because there's so many different outlets in real estate investing. There's so many, you can flip houses or you can do buy and hold, or you can do short-term rentals like Airbnb and Verbo, or you can do long-term rentals where they're unfurnished and you have one tenant. And it was really hard getting into it, being like, what do I want to focus on? But I would say, sorry, I get, I'm so passionate about this. I don't get to talk about it as much as acting. Um, I would say, do your research, find one of the strategies that inspires you and try to perfect it. I know you just mentioned like renting and like flipping, yeah. like which one do you enjoy more? Which so one's like I, easier, stress-free, like, man, this is easy, breezy. It's easier than the other ones. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's easier than the other one. Cause it does. I think it takes a little bit more prep work. I um, mean, it's a little bit more hands-on, but I, I specialize in short-term rentals. Um, but I actually, the last property I closed on, it is currently a short-term rental, but I, I'm planning on flipping it as well when I have time off. So that goes back to in January, February, when I'm not filming, I can go to that property, do a flip on it, and then decide if I want to like hold it as a short-term rental or sell it and just make it a flip. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so like, how, do you just like, do you like, every time you buy something, do you just renovate it? So actually, no, the, the first property I did, I was, it was move in ready. I got such a good deal. I got very lucky and it was really hard because the first deal I closed on was such a home run. I compared every single deal after that to that one. And I'm like, but it's not as good as that one. And I had one of my, um, someone I look up to as like a mentor in the investing world. He told me, he was like, Breck, you got a home run and that's amazing. But if you only look for home runs, you're never going to make progress. You got to get some singles and doubles on your portfolio as well. And like, that's really great for me to hear because I was so terrified of if it didn't seem as wonderful as that first day, I wasn't doing it. And he's like, you're scared. You can't be scared. I'm like, thank you. I needed to hear this. What is like, like what's, what is like considered like a, a good deal, like in real estate? Like, oh, like, that's, okay, that's a, a vague question. It just depends. It depends on what you're looking for. It depends on what you're doing. Um, for me, what's important is if it, uh, cash, cash flows positively. That's as long as it does that, I, I don't consider it a bad deal because real estate in the history of real estate, prop, like values don't really go down. So, um, if you're, you know, building equity and then also cash flowing, that sounds pretty good to me, but that's like the most vague answer because it's such a, it's such a broad question. Is there like, has there like been an investment you're like, man, like that you were like stressed about like after purchasing it? Uh, yeah, this, this past, um, property I closed on, I am, because it's going to be my first time doing any like proper renovations, like bringing a wall down, remodeling the kitchen. I've never done that before. So I am, I'm very intimidated by it. You know, you watch like the HGTV shows and they take the wall down and they realize, oh no, it's actually load bearing. We didn't know it was load bearing. So now you have to put a beam in. I don't know anything about that stuff, but you know what? I am so excited to learn. It's going to be great. Is there like somebody that you partner out with that you like, Hey, uh, if you like, say like you need to help, like who do you like reach out to? Yeah. So I, I do this all on my own, which has been one of the most validating parts of it because I knew nothing about it going into it. So it, I've just really had to do my own research, reach out to people. There's a, there's a website called bigger pockets where it's a bunch of real estate investors who, who get on there and just, there's like question, like you can ask questions. And I really just had to reach out to people and kind of like build a community by myself. And it was very intimidating because I'm quite, I'm quite young compared to most people in the real estate industry. And I'm a five, one girl. So I was so intimidated going up to these like businessmen who had been doing it for 30 years, but I'm like, you know what? So what, if they don't, if they judge me, then I don't want to work with them anyway. I don't want to learn from them anyway. It, it is what it is. No, yeah, I I appreciate that because I know like a lot, I like, I know a lot of people like just around me, they're like, hey man, we want to do real estate investment, but we're so scared that we buy something and it doesn't work out well, then we're just stuck with I, it. It's terrifying. <laughs> this is what I would say. It, it's so terrifying. Pick up a book, read a book, see if you're even actually interested in it because there's so many great real estate investing books and then find a meetup. There's also so many investor meetups. Go in. Will it be a little intimidating? Absolutely. But listen to the conversation. See if it interests you. And if it does, maybe go grab coffee with one of them. I don't know. What books do you like recommend for people to like read about? 
This is actually a cool conversation. I like no, that. yeah, yeah. We're not even talking about start. <laughs> I love this type of stuff. So the first book I read was the Burr Method, and it's a it's a really po- um really popular strategy. And it was so mind blowing to me, the fact that someone came up with such a intelligent strategy. And I'm like, this is so cool. I've never done a a burr. I've never used the burr method, but it's something I eventually one day want to use. But that's the first one I read. But there's just there's so many. That's just the first one I picked up. I don't know. Would you ever like create a show about this? Because you seem very passionate about it. Would you ever create a show like, hey, this is how I real estate. Absolutely. You know, there's so many shows like that now. Yeah, I do. I think I totally see a world where like my acting and my real estate can collide, whether it's like an HGTV show or a whatever. Like I totally see a world where I can be doing both simultaneously, like being on set, talk. Cause I am, I'm so passionate. I get like, my voice is like slowly escalating the more we talk about it. But anyway, star girl. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate you coming on. But no, I'm glad to hear about the real estate. Is there like any other things that you like want to get into? Like outside like real estate? Like yeah, I mean, like I, said, I do the I do the writing. So I am very passionate about writing and eventually getting my work made. But I, you know, I'm I'm pretty patient. So I know I have a, I have a lot to learn still and my work has a lot of room to get better but you know I'm open open to that so so how do you like you manage your time because uh, you're doing the real estate investment you're also acting like for like it feels like 20 hour days probably yeah <laughs> how do you like uh, manage that it's something I it's that's actually one of the my the, my biggest problems right now it's something I really really struggle with um like there was, when I first started filming these movies, I was sleeping maybe two hours a night because I was filming these movies. I was closing on a deal in Florida and I was still talking to my writing partner about certain changes we wanted to make on, on our script. And I just was not sleeping. And I was like, Breck, you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself as well. Um, so I, that's something I'm still working on. Um, I have a bit of a coffee addiction as it's 5.30 at night and I'm like, emptying a coffee but uh you know I'm I, I'm aware that it's an issue of mine and I'm working on it yeah so what, like what like where do you see yourself in like 10 years like what would you like to like have the brick empire look like? Ugh, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing in a year uh I I hope I'm on another show um I really love being I've been so blessed to have been on three shows now at this point in my career and I, I just thrive on like the consistent acting work of, of being on a show. So definitely see that, uh, hanging out with my dog a little bit more. Cause I really miss my dog. He's back in Texas. Um, and just, I'll just say surrounded by like friends and family, everything else would just be icing on the cake. But if I'm like working as an actor and surrounded by friends and family and my dog, like everything else. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally get it. Okay, I got one question for okay. acting and real estate. Last my last one. Like, what is something you wish you knew like before entering acting, or be becoming an actor? And what's one do you wish you knew before like real estate mm-hmm. investment? Yeah. Um one thing I wish I would have known before entering acting is um maybe how how hard, like how much it's gonna take you away from people you love I there was one month I think within 30 days I had been on 20 different planes because I was traveling to conventions and set and just different things and it definitely like I love my family so much and I I don't get to spend as much time with them as I would like to I'm not saying it would have uh I still would have pursued acting because I think that's where what I'm meant to be doing and where I am, where I'm supposed to be. But I think maybe a little bit more preparation for that. Just like know this about this career because it's definitely taken some time for me to adjust to that type of lifestyle. Um, and I'm not saying like you have to do that. Like I think there's a world where you can be acting consistently and still get time with your friends and family, but it's something I'm still working on. Um, and then... For real estate, I would say, oh gosh, I'm still learning so much. I'm still, I've only been doing it for two years. So just uh, don't give up on yourself because it can, 
be really intimidating, but just go for it. I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you taking yeah. your time out of your day to do this. Of course. I had so much fun talking with you. Thank you. Uh,